Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness was directed by Sam Raimi, and it stars Benedict Cumberbatch, Zaushi Gomez, Elizabeth Olsen, Benedict Wong, Rachel McAdams, and Bruce Campbell. It has been 15 years since Sam Raimi has directed a comic book film, and 9 years since he's directed a film of any kind. When I heard that Sam Raimi would be replacing Scott Derrickson in the director's chair for this film, my anticipation levels skyrocketed. I'm a huge fan of his Evil Dead films, and especially his Spider-Man films. I even have a soft spot for Spider-Man 3, despite of all of its flaws. This is, of course, the MCU's first horror movie, and every element of the horror genre in this film I absolutely adored. I love Sam Raimi's weird brand of horror. This film really feels like a spiritual continuation of the Evil Dead franchise. I feel like that this is the type of film that the MCU has desperately needed. Each of the films have kind of felt rather samey to me, and they more or less feel like that they were directed by a committee rather than an individual director. And this film definitely feels very Sam Raimi, very distinct against all the other MCU movies. I love how this film has Sam Raimi's unique mise-en-scene going for it. Oh god, that's pretentious. Sorry for my awful, awful French accent. The action here is pretty solid, too. I mean, a standout moment would probably be the fight against that weird Lovecraftian monster. The way they defeat that monstrosity, I'm surprised they were able to get away with in a PG-13 rated movie. This film really stretches the PG-13 rating by a lot, though though, and I really loved this aspect. I love how the MCU is starting to go in some darker directions, and maybe one day we could see an R-rated MCU movie, preferably Deadpool, but with Disney behind it, it makes, it makes this kind of unlikely, though I can dream. If you have really young kids, I would think twice about taking them to go see this movie. It may traumatize them, but it might be their generation's poltergeist. Mark my words, in about 10 years time, you're gonna see a whole new generation of kids talking about how this film scarred them for life. Kind of like how Gen Xers talk about poltergeist. I mean, this isn't the first time that Raimi has scarred a generation of kids. I mean, look at the hospital scene from Spider man too. That screwed me up when I was little. There's kind of a hot debate going around on the internet if this film should have been rated R, and I personally don't believe that would have been necessary here. I'm fully aware that the MPAA is broken because why does Clockwork Orange in 8th grade have the same rating? But... I mean, you have films like The Dark Knight, where you watch the Joker shove a pencil up a man's eye. So, extreme violence in PG-13 isn't, like, something that's uncommon. Elizabeth Olsen, I think, gives her best performance as Scarlet Witch in this film. This film is kind of a pseudo-sequel to WandaVision, if you know what I mean, despite of the fact that Sam Raimi had never watched WandaVision, but they take her character into some pretty dark and depressing direction. Also, Doctor Strange has a Spider-Man 2-like character arc here. He kind of has to discover what it means to be a hero and the sacrifices that are required to be a hero. It's not done as masterfully as in Spider-Man 2, but I did enjoy seeing some depth in his character. Where this film falls short for me is when it tries to provide fan service. Now, I don't hate fan service in its entirety. I mean, I loved 90% of the fan service in Spider-Man No Way Home. I mean, that fan service was done really well and carefully. When in this film, I feel like the fan service felt very studio mandated. Everything that is Sam Raimi in this film, I absolutely loved. Though, when this film strays away from that, when it tries to stray away from the madness, if you will, I think it kind of falls short and the quality dips quite noticeably. I mean, it doesn't become unwatchable or anything. It just 
it feels very studio mandated. I'm really trying not to get into spoilers, but there's a certain section in this film where it just kind of dumps a bunch of exposition and setup to you. And I just wanted them to go back to the weird Sam Raimi stuff. This film did leave me wanting more, and it only two hours long, the pacing feels a little messy here, and I'm not sure if there was studio me meddling. I'm not trying to claim that there was, though I wouldn't be surprised if this occurred. I mean, I would love to see a potential director's cut of this film, you know, with a little bit more madness. I was left wanting more, though, after seeing this film. I, I wanted to see more of Sam Raimi's twisted vision and less of a bunch of the fan service that Disney so clearly wanted. Though I would say a greater portion of this film is dedicated towards the weird, goofy Sam Raimi movie rather than the studio-mandated, cameo-infested, Marvel movie. And I didn't hate all the fan service. I mean, there were moments that did make me geek out, though I feel like that these moments didn't really feel earned, like the fan service moments in No Way Home. If you go into this film expecting fan service glore, you're going to be disappointed. Though if you go in expecting a weird, fun, goofy Sam Raimi horror movie, you're going to have a fun time at the cinema. Overall, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness gets a B. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about spoilers. So if you've never seen this film, I would just recommend clicking off this video right now. Seeing Patrick Stewart's Professor X certainly brought a smile to my face. And hearing the 90s X-Men theme for the first time on the big screen was a treat. Though all of this was kind of ruined for me by the fact that they just killed him off five minutes later. I know this is the multiverse and they can probably bring back Professor X anytime they want since the multiverse is obviously infinite. Though this is Patrick Stewart's Professor X and it's extremely unlikely that they're going to bring him back since the man is 81 years old. I mean, the character already had a beautiful send-off in the movie movie Logan with his heartbreaking performance. I don't know, I think they should have just let sleeping dogs lie here. Though on a positive note, it was really nice to see John Krasinski playing Mr. Fantastic. I'm hopeful that he's going to be the permanent guy for the role, though it would be incredibly unfortunate if this was his only appearance, because I just wanted to see so much more of him. I know I was very critical against the Illuminati scene, but I actually thought John Krasinski did a pretty solid job as Reed Richards. I'm obviously a little mixed about Wanda going around killing off the members of the Illuminati like a bunch of chumps, though I gotta admit, it was really ballsy, and I can't help but respect Sam Raimi for going in such a daring direction. I mean, they ultimately could bring these guys back. I'm still a little salty about Professor X, but... I never thought I would live to see the day where we watch a guy's head explode in an MCU movie. And I certainly enjoyed the reference to the first Matrix movie. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed my review of Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. And if you did, make sure to give this video a like. And if you want more content like this, hit the subscribe button and ring the bell notification so you can be notified every time I upload a new video. And shout out to Liquid Snake in the Apple II. Thanks for watching.